Hi guys, welcome back. So when CSS2 became standard, it meant that we could begin to use custom fonts, which changed how the web looks. But it wasn't really until 2009 that browsers widely supported the use of custom fonts. So that's pretty recent. Today, web pages can call on any font that it has the right to use. So if you can access it and you have the right to use it, then you can use it on your web page. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to use custom fonts on our web pages, and we're gonna pay particular attention to a really fantastic resource called Google Fonts. Now, Google Fonts is a service which gives us access to hundreds, if not thousands of fonts, and we can browse through these and select them to use on our own web pages. Okay, so to touch on what we saw in the last video, we set a font on an element with the CSS font family property. We give it a hierarchically ordered list of fonts as a value, and we call this a font stack. The first choice font, its immediate backup font, a third choice, and so on. We usually end the stack by declaring a generic font type like a serif or sans serif, and this gives the browser a foul-proof fallback that it can always display if the preceding fonts fail for any reason. To add a custom font to our stack, one thing we could do is purchase a license from a marketplace like FontShop. Here we can view and buy all kinds of fonts. They can get quite expensive. Um, take this one for example. This font family is 65 individual fonts of different weights and styles. There are various thin, regular, bold and italicized versions of the font and buying the entire family would cost quite a lot of money which is probably unrealistic um, for many people uh, unless it's for a brand or for a professional site that needs the distinct identity given by a custom font. For those that do not want to or who cannot spend this sort of money on a project, we can thankfully still access a wide variety of custom font families with Google Fonts. And according to their analytics page, Google Fonts have been loaded or viewed over 63 trillion times. About a quarter of that is from this one font called Roboto. The homepage says there are over 1,400 fonts available at the time of recording. And these little cards show us an example of each font in a standard, regular 400 weight. To see the different weights and styles available for a given font family, just click the card and choose from thin to the boldest weight in both standard and italic styles. We will come back to this page in just a second, but if we go back for now, we can see thicknesses and other properties by clicking font properties and then adding our conditions. We can change the sentence the font is applied to here, uh, perhaps even selecting just the alphabet or numerals. We can also adjust font size with this slider or also select from predefined sizes with this drop down. We can browse the various fonts available to us simply by scrolling. Though this would just keep populating so we might instead want to narrow it down by type. Categories gives us the different font types we can choose from. We talked about some of these in the last video, but quickly, serif fonts have flourishes at the end of strokes. These are the embellishments that you see here. Sans serif fonts are without these and are clean and commonly used for main body text on web pages. Handwriting fonts have flowing connected strokes and emulate handwriting, of course. Um, these are also known as cursive fonts and display fonts are used for billboards, posters, logo types, magazine headlines, etc. They can really be from any font type and are designed to be eye-catching and are embellished or exaggerated for use with larger font sizes. Monospace fonts, which I haven't yet mentioned, are simply fonts that display every character in exactly the same width. Okay, so let's how we go about using one of these fonts on a web page. We'll select Roboto and we see that it has the different weights available from 100 all the way through to 900 plus italic styles. Each of these in this list is a font that belongs to this one font family. So if there are weights and styles that you don't intend to use, then you need not select them. 
any you do select will be sent by Google, so you should select just the fonts you need and avoid unnecessary increases in the file size sent by Google, which, which could lead to slower load times. So let's select maybe just three weights. We'll have one thin, one regular, and one bold. Most of the time, I would probably only use two weights, to be perfectly honest, one for headings and one for the main paragraph text. We can remove them at any point if needed later on and add others quite easily. We could download these fonts as a file, which we add to our projects file structure and link to those with a link tag, but we're not going to do that as Google's API serves them to users over the web whenever they load on a given website. So instead, we can take these three link tags, we'll copy them, and then we will paste them into the head of this HTML document. This means the Roboto fonts we selected are now available to use on our web page. We see Google gives us this CSS declaration of property and value here. We're going to add this to our CSS file. So we're going to create a body, HTML or root selector, um, if we want the font to be inherited by all elements on the page. And there we have our font. So we're using one font family here, but often we might want to use a couple of font families paired together. Usually this would involve using one font family for the main text and another for headings and subheadings. For example, this website called FontPair gives us a decent amount of common font pairings that work together. One font for the headings here and another for the main text. Let's see what they pair with Roboto. And this one here called Roboto Slab um, looks like it's matching up pretty well. So we'll go back to Google Fonts and search for that. And we see that it is there. So I'll select and choose the weights that I want. Let's say 500 for this one, which looks like it will work for our headings. And we see in the side panel here, the code Google has given us has now updated and now also includes the new font, the Roboto Slab. So we'll copy this and replace what we currently have in the head of our HTML document. We need the CSS declaration as well, and this time we only want to target headings with this font. So I'm going to create a grouped H1 and H2 selector and add our declaration. I'll give the headings a color. And if we now save, we see our headings are now in the new Roboto Slab font. So that's how we can take one of over a thousand custom fonts and add them to our projects. Google is going to serve them over the web to users if we add these three link tags to the head of an HTML document. I'd like to show you next how Google Fonts works and how we can optimize the file sizes that Google sends. In the third link tag that Google has given us, we have a URL uh, for the font, and if we view that in the browser, we get given a CSS file with several CSS font face selectors. These are character sets for Cyrillic, Greek, Vietnamese, and Latin alphabets, and we have these for each of our fonts, weights, and styles that we've selected. So for Roboto, we have Cyrillic, Greek, Vietnamese, and Latin character sets for the weight that we selected, and then the same for the Roboto slab at 500 in each of those character sets too. That's a lot of characters, so let's see if we can do something about that. I've added a couple of spans and a link in each paragraph. The span has a font weight of 700, and the links have a lighter weight of 300. The paragraphs have a font weight of 400, and then we have these headings and subheadings using the Roboto slab with a 500 weight. So that's two font families, but four different fonts. I'll open DevTools and select the Network tab. And when I now reload this page, you see that we have our HTML document, our CSS style sheet, the linked style sheet sent by Google Fonts, and four individually sent fonts. If we click on each of these, we can see what they are. If you're not seeing them here in this panel, make sure that you are in the Network tab 
you can click here to disable cache and then reload. Then you can click on each of these font types and you should be able to see which one is which in this preview window. So you see we're not only sent one Roboto font and one Roboto slab font, we're getting three fonts sent from the Roboto font family. Each one of these is fetched by the browser as a separate resource and requires time to load. We can see the size of each file here and we can bring this file size down by limiting the characters that we use. So for example, as our page does not contain any numbers presently, we could ask Google as a trivial example to only send us some letters. So in the head of our HTML document, I need to add something extra to the URL where the style sheet is located. It will accept a text parameter and I'm going to paste um, the alphabet, which is all the characters that I want Google to send, and I have all of the letters in uppercase and lowercase. Whatever you pass in here needs to be formatted to work in a URL, so if you have spaces or other characters, you're going to need to escape those or format them for a URL. But anyway, if we ask for just those characters, that is all we're going to get, so we specify the characters we need, and the file sizes now sent are much smaller. We can test what is being sent by not asking for say the two H's and if I delete those from our text parameter and you keep your eye on the big H in the heading and the small H in the subheading, you'll see that when we save, they are displayed in the fallback font. So that's a cool little optimization for smaller font sizes. Okay, so that's Google Fonts, which is a really fantastic resource. It gives us access to hundreds and thousands of fantastic fonts that are freely available to use on our own web pages. So to recap, we looked at various font types and how using paid custom fonts can get quite expensive. For example, if you paid for a custom font uh, that came in um, several weights and styles you could be looking at paying hundreds of dollars for the privilege. So we looked instead at Google Fonts and how we go about adding fonts from their library um, completely for free. We looked at font pairing and how Google Fonts is working behind the scenes. So if you're still unsure how to use fonts or pair them together, I recommend you look at Google font knowledge and this will give you a better understanding of typographic concepts and aid you in choosing the right fonts for your project. So that's it, thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. Remember to like the video and sub to the channel if you feel like it. It really helps me to continue making this, these videos. I know I've taken some time off recently, that's because I've recently started a new job and I've been learning how all of their systems work and plug in together and how everything's operating on the back end so that's been taking up all of my attention of late i do apologize videos will come out more frequently for now on um, in the next video we're going to be looking at a really big topic and that is css flexbox so it's probably going to be quite a long video um, so i'll get that out as quick as possible and it should be on the channel very soon so thank you once again for watching i do appreciate your time and i will see you in the next one